good to have you along with us here today at Center Point Online on this Sunday, 27th of December, as we, we have this Sunday every year, the, I call it the in-between Sunday, the Sunday between Christmas and New Year's Day. And we don't have a full worship gathering today. We're giving our hosting team a, a day off. Our worship team is, is taking a break. And I'm just going to share a, a brief reflection with you from God's Word. I'm not going to preach. This is not a full sermon. But here it's a Sunday. And I just want to encourage you with the Word of God. But before we go to the Bible, I just want to mention that you do not want to miss next Sunday, this coming Sunday, uh, the first Sunday in January. This is always for us what we call Vision Sunday. And we're going to take a moment next Sunday to look back over this year 2020, but also to look into the future. We did a series earlier in the autumn called Great Faith for a Great Future. And I believe this. I believe that God has great things in store for us coming up in 2021. And so don't miss next Sunday. Be sure to join us right here at Center Point Online. And so today, we'll get to next week, next week. But today, I just have a word of encouragement for you. I'm going to share a verse and then just give a reflection for this, and then I will pray for us. This is going to be brief this morning. And so for those of you who love long sermons, I apologize up front. This is just a brief reflection. But this is a verse that I have been meditating on for a while now, especially in this year of 2020. And it's, I, I feel like, I sound like a broken record, and I think many of us just making the comments about what this year has been like, uh, a year like no other, the, the year of the shutdown, of the global pandemic, of, of lockdown and furloughs and coronavirus and stay-at-home orders and clustering and bubbles. And so it's, it's, been, it's been a different year. It's been a challenging year. And, and yet when we go to the Bible, we see some of some of the most faithful followers of Jesus, they, they walk through incredible difficulty. You know, sometimes we have this thought that the more spiritual we are, that, that we, we, we can move above struggle, move, move above discomfort, move above difficulty. And it's actually just the opposite. And so today I'm just going to read two verses from Paul's letter to Second letter to the Corinthians. Now, this is the church that Paul planted. city of Corinth is over there in, in Greece. And this is his second letter. The, the first letter that he wrote had some reasonably severe rebukes in it. And here he's, he's writing back, and there's a very pastoral element. Second Corinthians is Paul's most personal letter. He unveils his soul and reflects on a lot of his life circumstances, many of which were suffering. Uh, but this is how he starts the letter. I want you to, to listen to this. Then I'm going to offer just a couple of reflections on this. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Now, there's so much packed into here. I promise I'm not going to preach, but just number one, notice how many times it uses the word comfort. If you didn't guess it, the word comfort, that is the, the key theme here. Um, he starts by calling God the God of all comfort. Now, the word comfort here in the Greek is the, the same word that's, that's used, the same root that's used for the Holy Spirit, who's called the comforter. It's the, the, the paraclete or parakletos and the, the God of all comfort. And th that word in, in the Greek means the God who comes along beside, the God who is with us as we're walking through whatever it is that we're walking in. And so the, the Holy Spirit is God with us as we walk through the stuff of life. And here Paul is reminding these Corinthians that God is the God of all comfort. In other words, there's no dimension of comfort that is outside what God is able to provide. 
So how many times does, does Paul use the word comfort here? One, two, three, four, five. Five times in these two verses. There's a revelation about comfort that God wants us to get. Now, the reason we need comfort is because life's difficult, and especially this year has been for, for everyone in, in many different ways. We just were reflecting during our Christmas season about the, the darkness of isolation, the darkness of uncertainty, the darkness of lack, the darkness of disappointment. And here, Paul's, this is what he says. Number one, God is the God of all comfort. And number two, he comforts us. And the place that he comforts us is in our affliction. Now, thankfully, life is not only affliction. There are pockets, there are moments of joy. But in our affliction, that's where we need the comfort of God. And that's when God brings his comfort. He, number one, he comforts us in our affliction. Now, look at the reason. He says, so that. Now, when you see so that, he's giving us a reason for why he does what he does. God comforts us in our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction. And so we receive comfort from God. And so lesson number one is learn how to receive God's comfort. And before we go, I'm going to give you two practical ways to get God's comfort. But then we receive this comfort. Then he says, so that we can comfort those who are in any affliction, and that is we've been comforted, so look around for someone else who, who may be worse off than you. Yeah, your life has been hard and difficult and hellacious this year. Well, somebody else may have had an even more difficult year. You have something from God with which you can comfort them, but first you've got to receive the comfort from God. And then he says, so that the comfort that we give so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves have been comforted by God. And so the picture here, very simply, God comforts us and we share that comfort with others. Now, very practically, the, the, the reflection, the, the revelation, how, how does God comfort us? And I just want to point these two ways. First of all, this word comfort, it is used in the psalm that we looked at on the first day of lockdown. I don't know if you can remember that, but back in March, we were, we were in church over at Simpson Primary School on one Sunday. The prime minister announces lockdown. And then the next Sunday, in a week, we went from full in-person church to trying to figure out what online church is, is all about. And that first Sunday, we looked at Psalm 23. And in verse 4, it makes us, the, the psalmist reflects this, beautiful part where he says, even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. Now that's a beautiful promise that God is with us in the valley of the shadow of death. But then this is the part we tend to leave off. He explains how God is with us. He says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So this is interesting. God comforts us with his rod and with his staff. Now the rod, that is a word that's also used in the Bible for, for correction, the, the, the rod, the, the straight stick. And so the, the, the correction is that he just taps a sheep who's wandering off to, to keep them close to the flock, to keep them in line. As they're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, there's danger that way, danger that way. He's keeping them on the, on the safe path. See, God is a good shepherd. Um, go, go, go read John chapter 10. Jesus is the good shepherd. He's the best shepherd. He, he loves us so much. He will not let us wander off. He, he's tapping us, keeping us in line. Now, sometimes it hurts a little bit when he taps us. Don't be afraid of God comforting you by tapping you to bring you back in line. Just, just bring you back. And then the staff, that's the stick that's got the, the hook at the end. When we get too far that the the, the, the rod can't reaches us. He reaches us with his hook and it's a bit more of a, 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 a violent tug. Sometimes God has to tug us a bit. Our hearts can wander. Not just far, or our, they, they can get polluted. We can start getting into a negative cycle, thinking dark thoughts. He pulls us back. So, number one, God comforts us by keeping us in line, by pulling us back to center where we can enjoy his presence. Now, the second one, 
The second way God comforts us, and this is what Paul experienced here in 2 Corinthians. He describes in two or three places some of the amazing persecution he experienced as a follower of Jesus and as an apostle, as a proclaimer of the gospel. He was whipped, he was beaten, he was stones, beaten with whips, beaten with rods. He was shipwrecked, he was imprisoned, he was in hunger. Uh, it, it was just, just one, one, one thing after another. You think, how, did you, how did you do it? Well, he's been comforted by God. And part of the comfort that animated Paul is found in this simple word, the gospel. He was perpetually reflecting on what God had done for him. And he describes it over here at the end of chapter 5. And I just want to end with this, make this our last thought. As we wrap up 2020, as we're getting ready to go into 2021, I, I believe it's going to be a good year. We're not immediately going to be able to meet back together in person. But by the end, before we get to the end of 2021, we will be back together. It's going to be a good year. There are good things God has in store for us. But the best thing God always has for us is himself. And we have access to him through what he's done through Christ, through the gospel. That Jesus lived the life we should have lived. He died a death in our place bearing our sin in his body on the cross. And then he was raised from the dead through glorious demonstration that his sacrifice was acceptable to God. And so Paul's reflecting on that. And this is what he says, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the great substitution for our sake, for us. God made him sin. Jesus didn't be physically become sin, but God put our sin on him. Jesus was not sinful, but he bore our sin so that we might bear his righteousness. He took on our sinfulness. We receive his righteousness. This is why Paul can walk in such great comfort when he's in the depths of prison, when he's being beaten, when he's being shipwrecked. He never let go of this fact that God was clinging onto him through the gospel. That because of what Jesus did, he had this gift of righteousness, right standing with God. The good news for us is that regardless of how dark this year has been, God has not neglected us. And it has never been so dark that God has let go. He's clinged to us every step of the way. And at the root of that, it's because of what Jesus did. Jesus bore our sin so that we might bear his righteousness and be able to come into the fullness of God's inheritance for us. This next year is going to be a good year, but we end 2020. What a year this has been by simply remembering with deep gratitude what God has given us in Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we bless you this day and we thank you that you are the God of all comfort. Lord, you comfort us by being with us in the valley of the shadow of death keeping us in line, keeping us close to you, not letting us wander off so that you can take us safely to the other side. Like Jesus said in John 10, no one can snatch your sheep out of your hand. You keep us and we make it through. But you also comfort us, O oh God, by this reflection in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, that Jesus bore our sins on the cross and because of that, we bear his righteousness. Lord, we thank you so much for what you've given us in Christ. Lord, we look back over this year, it's been so hard, and yet you have been so faithful. Lord, I pray that in our hearts and minds, as we think back to 2020, 2020 that the big thing is not how hard it was been, but how faithful you have been. And with that in mind, we look forward to this new year, O oh God, believing that you do have great things in store for your people. Lord, I pray for everyone who's watching. I pray that as we wrap up this year, you would bring your comfort and your blessing to every heart, O oh God. You're a good God. You are the God of all comfort. For this, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Amen. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you next week at Vision Sunday right here at Center Point Online. We'll be together in 2021. Searching